And thank you so much for joining us today. We are excited to be here, um, excited to share the results of the peer review process for the draft Pacific Herring Fisheries Management Plan. Uh, currently, we have all the lines muted with everyone in listen only mode. Uh, during the question and answer portion of the call, we will invite you to either chat in your questions using the chat function um, or to raise your hand by clicking the little hand icon, the raise your hand button um, on your screen. And if you're on the phone, uh, pressing star nine on the phone will, uh, will raise your hand so that we can, you can alert us that you have a question that you would like to, to ask. Um, so I want to just start with um, welcome. My name again is Jessica Williams. I am a project scientist uh, here at the Ocean Science Trust. And the goal of today's discussion on this webinar is to provide the opportunity for members of the Pacific Herring community, that is all of you, uh, to hear the recommendations from the peer review panel, results of the peer review process that has occurred over the summer and was just released last week. Um, again, those materials can be found on the Pacific Herring uh, peer review website. Um, that link is at the bottom of this slide as well and um, in the chat. You are invited to share your scientific questions with the peer review panel and learn more about the peer review approach today. Um, so again, all those webinar materials can be found on the website um, and as well as you know, some additional background information as, as that's helpful. So today's webinar is scheduled for one hour. Uh, we will conclude right at 2 p.m. The agenda is as outlined here. Uh, once we finish with some housekeeping and introductions, uh, Ocean Science Trust will provide a brief overview of the scientific peer review process for the Pacific Herring Fisheries Management Plan. Uh, and the purpose for today's webinar, as I mentioned, um, to provide that opportunity uh, to hear those recommendations and ask uh, those clarifying and scientific-based questions. Um, so some of this, uh, you know, as we get into that may be familiar to some of you, uh, but the intention is to ensure that everyone on the call is starting today's discussion with the same background information and context. Um, so we would like to spend the majority of the call today uh, focusing on the peer review recommendations that resulted from this peer review process and any questions that you all have to help better understand those recommendations. Uh, we will have about 20 to 25 minutes for those questions, uh, and during any portion of this call, um, you can chat those questions in. Um, we will open the lines up uh, at, during that question and answer period. Um, you can also chat in if you're uh, having issues, troubleshooting, um, we can help you, help you do that. Um, so we will take a few minutes at the, um, then at the end after uh, the, the question and answer. Um, to just note where the, the FMP process is heading um, and additional opportunities for community input engagement. Um, so as a quick reminder, um, if you can't access today's webinar materials, if you're having any difficulty, um, please email us, email me at jessica.williams at oceansciencetrust.org and I will um, put that, that email up at the end of the webinar as well um, and we can email those materials out to you uh, following the webinar. Um, so during the uh, question and answer portion of the call, um, we request that person limit their questions uh, so that we can be sure that everyone has an opportunity to be heard. As there are a limit, there is a limited amount of time for this webinar, please keep the comments um, questions succinct um, and limit to clarifying questions. If your questions have been conveyed by another participant, we would appreciate that you either state your agreement um, or support with that question uh, via the chat um, and allow that time to be uh, the time to be used to convey additional questions. Uh, when you do speak to ask a question, um, we ask that you state your name so that we can speak to you directly. This sets just a more personal tone. We would really love that. Um, and we're going to try to keep this uh, conversation um, as, as orderly as possible and try to get to as many questions as we can during this time. Um, this is an opportunity to ask those questions, um, but being mindful that time is limited. If we are not able to, to get to your question due to time restrictions 
or technical issues that we, we don't hope happen, um, that is always a possibility during, during webinars, um, please submit those questions to, to me at that email address that I will uh, link at the end of the webinar, um, and we can work to follow up with you as, as helpful. Um, so in order to, to continue and have a productive information exchange today, we just do ask that everyone on the call um, participate with the following guidelines, uh, the recommend or agreements in mind. Um, these are to participate in a respectful and constructive manner where the interests of all participants are considered, uh, listen for understanding and openly uh, discuss the issues with others who hold diverse views, acknowledge and seek clarification and verify assumptions, um, provide clear, concise questions, and additional comments can be shared in written form if that's helpful. Uh, personal attacks will not be tolerated and to just please put yourself on mute when you are not speaking just to eliminate any of that um, potential background noise so that everyone, everyone can hear throughout the webinar. Um, if you have any questions or uh, concerns about these, these agreements, um, you can chat those in uh, as, as helpful. We ask that um, we all, including myself, um, adhere to, to these agreements throughout the webinar. Um, so again, this webinar provides the opportunity uh, for the hearing, Pacific Hearing community to engage with the peer review panel, uh, discuss your science-based questions, and help provide any further clarity about what was or was not addressed under the peer review. So this discussion will help complete the peer review process in terms of upholding the transparency in the peer review and related communications, um, while also maintaining uh, the independence of that, the scientific integrity of the external peer review. So I, again, just wanna thank you all for joining us today and, and sitting with us through, through those housekeeping announcements. Um, with that, I am gonna kick us off with some introductions. Uh, again, my name is Jessica Williams. Uh, our team at the Ocean Science Trust, including Melissa Kent and Aaron Ramanujam are also on the webinar uh, coordinated. We coordinated an external independent peer review of the proposed management strategy within the California Department of Fish and Wildlife draft Pacific Herring Fisheries Management Plan. Uh, we do want to say out loud and thank the Ocean Protection Council for funding this peer review, including today's uh, public webinar. We have on the call with us today our peer review panelists um, that include Elliot Hazen, Dan Okamoto, and Cody Shuzwalski. Apologies, Cody, if I mispronounced that. <laughs> um, Rebecca Selden was also, she also served on the peer review panel, um, but could not be with us today. Uh, members of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife are also on the line. Um, and as this is a webinar focused on the peer review results and a dialogue between the peer review panel and the community members, um, the members of the department will remain in listen only mode uh, during this webinar. So we will uh, now move into just a, a brief presentation and orientation of the overall peer review process. Um, you will continue to hear me speak, apologies for that. <laughs> we will get to the, the peer review panelists in a moment, I promise. Um, just a brief background uh, on the peer review process in general. As a primary goal of the fisheries, of fisheries management under the Marine Life Management Act um, is to ensure that fishing levels are sustainable, collaborative, adaptive, responsive to the changing ocean conditions, among others. Um, and so recent concerns about changing ocean conditions, um, loss of spawning habitat, uh, stakeholder interest, and the need to better understand spawning and stock fluctuations um, in their role in forage fish have uh, prompted the development of the fishery management plan for the Pacific Herring. Uh, proposed management strategy, the proposed management strategy to be included in um, FMPs are required by the MLMA to undergo external independent peer review prior to submission to the California Fish and Game Commission. So this peer review process provides assurance that the FMPs um, are based upon the best readily available scientific information. So here, the peer review panel uh, reviewed the management strategy framework uh, for the draft FMP for Pacific Herring. So the uh, California Ocean Science Trust, um, with support from the Ocean Protection Council, has been requested by the Fish and Game Commission 
and the Department of Fish and Wildlife to coordinate an external uh, independent peer review of the draft FMP. The scientific peer reviewers uh, are a group of four scientists selected by the Ocean Protection Council Science Advisory Team uh, Executive Committee to review the science used in the FMP. These four individuals come from all over the country and specialize in a range of disciplines, including fishery science and management, ecology, forage fish, population dynamics, um, et cetera. So the peer reviewer's responsibility is to make sure the FMP uses the best available science to inform uh, management approaches. Um, and everyone participating in the peer review panel completed this in, in service and was very thoughtful throughout the, uh, the, the process um, about the fishery as a whole. So this process um, took place uh, over the spring and summer of this year. Uh, the OPC science advisory team uh, peer review panelists were selected um, and the scope and process uh, guidelines were developed. Um, and then as we received the draft fisheries management plan, uh, they began their, their review um, throughout the summer. So this fall, uh, just last week, uh, we finalized the peer review report um, and now here we are um, in October holding the public sharing webinar. And so this webinar um, is the conclusion of this peer review process. So I will stop monologuing. I will stop talking um, and pause there and see if there are any clarifying questions on the process as a whole before we move on. And if, just as a reminder, um, if you do have a question, you can either chat it in using the chat function on your screen um, or raise your hand uh, using that little raise your hand button. Um, that will alert us that you have a question. If you are on the phone, um, star nine should, should raise your hand. Seeing and hearing none. Um, great. So we would like to take um, the rest of the call to focus on the peer reviewers recommendations that resulted from this peer review process and any questions that you all have to help better understand those recommendations. And um, so you'll hear a pause from, from me for, for a while. <laughs> uh, for, the portion, for this portion of the call, um, I'm going to turn it over to Elliot Hazen. He served as the chair of this peer review panel, and he will spend about 15 minutes walking through and highlighting some of the peer reviewers' main findings. Uh, we will then open it up to the other reviewers on the line, um, Dan and Cody, uh, to add any additional comments um, as, they, as they see appropriate. And after, uh, we will have about 20 to 25 minutes to open it up to questions from all of you. So I think with that, um, I am excited to turn it over to Elliot. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can still hear me. I wanted to first just thank the uh, sheer impressive amount of work by the department, CDFW there, the Pacific Herring Steering Committee, other stakeholders involved, and outside experts, including the Farallon Institute, that put in so much effort towards this FMP that you know, we reviewed. And overall, we felt that it really was an impressive effort towards building a predictive spawning stock biomass model. And in addition, and probably equally so, moving towards incorporating ecosystem conditions. That's not an easy task, but the fact that this, this um, fishery FMP is moving that way and, and doing so is really encouraging um, you know, from a larger fisheries standpoint. So the overview of the recommendations will follow the structure that is laid out here, starting with the section one, the essential fishery information. Uh, section two, evaluating the SSB thresholds and harvest rates. Section three, evaluation of ecosystem indicators. Um, four, science supporting additional conservation and management. And then five, future research and methods. So this is an overview, so I'm not going to talk about every individual, you know, kind of specific item, but I'll try to go quicker rather than slower so that we have more time for questions at the end. Uh, but please do look at the report if um, there are things that I have not explained clearly here. So I think next slide. 
So starting with section one, the essential um, fisheries information. So the reviewer, the review panel found the representation of the existing literature on biology of the stock accurate, um, but there was a, a few areas, or there were a few areas where clarification would be helpful and additional information, gap, information gaps could be filled. Uh, for example, higher resolution information on fecundity would be important, um, and more clarity on the structure of the stock over space and time, and how that's explicitly considered in the management. The one other point I feel needs to be made strongly here is that it is of utmost importance to, um, to the review panel to continue these recruitment or the young of the year surveys because they are a key piece of this improved uh, predictive model to estimate spawning stock biomass, which was kind of the focus, or which was the focus of the review here. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. So now for section two, the evaluation of SSP thresholds and harvest rates. Um, overall, the, we found that the proposed spawning stock, predictive spawning stock biomass model and harvest control rule for setting quota was a significant improvement over the previous methods for a few reasons. One is simply it does a better job predicting SSB. Two, by including the recruitment or YOI, it provides valuable information on kind of year class strength that a uh, biomass estimate alone does not. And often, if you just look at the time series of herring biomass, assuming the current year will be like the previous year is a pretty poor predictive strategy when temporal autocorrelation is low. Then finally, the more accurate predictions resulting from this proposed SSB would reduce the likelihood of either over or under exploiting the stock. Um, so these benefits made the predictive uh, spawning stock biomass model a clear winner in our minds over the empirical method, which again, really, this was the focus of our review. So there were a few issues raised that um, on the proposed predictive SSB. They were raised again in just the kind of the air of full transparency and trying to be as thorough as possible that we addressed in our recommendations including explicitly considering and incorporating um, in uncertainty in future uh, stock assessment work. So the other point here is that just developing a stock assessment would also allow a more a framework for managers to ask more complicated questions about changes in management. And the point just came up that, you know, stock assessments aren't perfect, uh, often aren't perfect on the first try. So just because there have been hiccups or problems along the way, we did not want to discourage the process of developing a stock assessment moving forward as well. Okay, I think it's next slide then. Um, another part is the management strategy evaluation that we reviewed was focused entirely on the existing um, spawning stock biomass rule, did not incorporate the predictive model, it did not have economic impacts of closures, and nor did it have the uh, ecosystem considerations. So we did suggest that further research be done to kind of expand the MSC to include all of those components um, moving forward. Next slide, I think. So now for section three, the ecosystem indicators. Um, the review panel felt very strongly that the ecosystem indicator section is both quite forward-looking and useful in understanding what is affecting the broader ecosystem. And again, recognize the immense amount of work that went into developing these ecosystem um, indicators. So we're really encouraged to see that. There aren't many examples of where ecosystem indicators are directly used in management. And we, as a review panel, felt that this um, FMP had the potential to kind of lead the way, both for the state of California and even more broadly for how ecosystem indicators could be used in management. Although more work needed um, was mentioned would be very helpful in linking how the specific rationale for the ecosystem indicators would result in direct kind of management changes. And there are plenty of examples of kind of where this has been done, things like the department working on the ramp, um, other kind of yellow, red, green scoring criteria that are described um, in detail in the review document as well. The, in addition, the, you know, we understand that a lot of these ecosystem indicators do not have direct mechanistic linkages. But just coming up with some more quantitative thresholds um, and looking historically to make sure that if you incorporate ecosystem indicators and in adjusting the quota, would that have an adverse impact on the fishery? And then um, basically doing that would provide more kind of basis to make sure that these ecosystem indicators are performing as the department and the steering committee would like them to perform. So it's really important to mention we're not suggesting um, throwing them out in any way, shape, or form. What we are suggesting is we really want to see them 
better linked to the management decisions and incorporated uh, in, you know, in the FMP moving forward to manage basically fisheries in a more holistic way. Next slide. Um, also, section three here is to evaluate the harvest control rules corresponding to the proposed quota adjustments based on the ecosystem indicators. Um, again, doing this kind of in a, both a retrospective analysis and um, forward-looking to understand how a given increase or decrease in quota would relate to the performance metrics in the MSC. Just it's linking those two up, understanding that the MSC was only focused on the um, previous model, but really moving forward, having a more um, thorough MSC would be really useful. Next slide. So now we're on the section four, and basically we concluded that a sloped HCR with this 10% maximum exploitation rate is likely to minimize the impact of the fishery on both the stock and the ecosystem. We did recognize that it's the lower range, essentially, of the herring population, so there are you know, potential climate impacts long-term on this, but the way that the, the FMP has laid out, you know, we felt was, was quite um, reasonable. So using catch restrictions as the main management measure is likely to be effective um, via streamlining the start and end date of the regulations will also make this more enforceable as well. So there were some minor re recommendations to expand the rationale, um, discussion, and um, the various components of the additional management measures, including providing further rationale for the mesh size limits, why those were chosen, um, expanding discussion of the implications of targeting uh, the H4 plus on stock sustainability, the description of the effort restrictions and its link to the tonnage goals, and more quantitative targets for when certain rules will be reconsidered. All of these things, again, just to aid in the, in the, in the um, vein of transparency and reproducibility in the FMP. So last, section five. Um, the big thing here, again, we're just repeating what I said earlier, but I don't think we can say this strongly enough, but the prioritizing sampling for recruitment is to move forward with a predictive SSB model it's necessary to keep sampling these young of the year herring. So that's something that um, we felt needed to be at the forefront of our recommendation. Um, formally analyzing the predator-prey interactions to inform the incorporation of ecosystem indicators. And this is not necessarily a suggestion that this is something the department has to do year in and year out, but really highlighting the um, existing amount of work, such as um, has been done by the Farallon Institute to understand how these ecosystem indicators could act together to dictate whether you're in kind of a bad or, or good regime. And then also better characterize the spatial variation in response to environmental change. So where are the, you know, the effects going to be kind of greater or lesser, um, you know, based on what we know about the environment and the response of the ecosystem. So I think I really quickly breezed through everything. So hopefully giving a lot more time for questions um, I should, if it's okay with um, Jessica and Melissa, give some of the other review panelists a chance to speak up if I missed anything in particular. Otherwise, we can open the floor for question after that. Thank you. Yeah, so with Dan and Cody, you should both be muted. So if you have any additional comments, um, any additional pieces to Elliot's presentation, um, please feel free to share. Dan, you want to go first? Uh, I think Elliot pretty much covered most of the key points. Um, I suppose I can chime in when there's a uh, specific question. Yeah, I think so too. I think Elliot did a great job. One thing I might add to all of that was in addition to um, formally incorporating the predator prey, prey interactions into the management strategy evaluation was also um, trying to build models of the economics of the fleets as well, because the, the economics were a, a driving factor of how the harvest control rule was set. So having a little more understanding and transparency behind um, how those cutoffs were derived would, would be useful. But also, I'd, I'd also like to echo what Elliot said, that the, the amount of work that was put into this was quite impressive. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, so with that, we have about half an hour for questions. So we will open it up to any folks who have any clarifying questions, any questions about 
the um, science and, and those recommendations, uh, we'll open it up for um, community questions. And so again, the, if you are on the phone, um, you can press star nine and should, we should be able to see that you're raising your hand. There's also the little raise your hand button. Um, you can go ahead and click that to raise your hand at the bottom of your screen on your computer. Um, or you can also uh, use the chat function. We welcome you to send questions in via the chat as well. Um, if anyone is having, having trouble, um, chat those, those in and, and we, can, we can work to, to get those resolved. Um, and just a, a note again to prevent background noise, uh, once you ask your question, we are going to place you back on mute um, so that we just don't have any, any feedback and everybody can hear clearly. Um, so just a quick reminder, the purpose of this webinar is to share information about the, the panel's recommendations and offer the opportunity for you all to ask uh, questions um, to understand better as helpful is for you all. Um, the report and recommendations contained within our final, and if you have any other further concerns or thoughts, um, you are invited to share those. Um, there will be future engagement opportunities via the Fish and Game, Com Fish and Game Commission meetings um, as well. Um, we can provide those links to that schedule um, and the, the Department of Fish and Wildlife's hearing webpage um, at the end of the webinar, as is helpful. Um, so again, really quickly, before I open it up, I know you're probably sick of hearing me. Um, <laughs> we may not be able to, to get to all questions. Um, we do have a good chunk of time, but just in case we cannot, um, we will try our best. Um, but if there is a limited amount of time, so please keep those questions succinct. Um, and if your question has already been asked, um, we ask that you just uh, kindly wait um, and ask an additional question. Um, so when you speak, again, please state your name so that we can, we can speak directly to you. And um, we would really love to set that uh, personal tone and conversation. Um, and again, if, if you do, if we do not get to your question, um, please feel free to, to email me uh, at jessica.williams at oceansciencetrust.org and we can follow up with you as helpful. Looks like we have a hand up. And we'll go ahead and open that up. Um, well, let's see. I believe the hand up is uh, Jeff Shester, and it looks like you're using an older version of Zoom. Um, would it be possible, Jeff, for you to chat in your question? It's not allowing me to open it up. Um, open it up for you to speak. Um, while we're figuring that out, I've got a. Um, I've got a chat in from Marilyn Lotta, and Marilyn asks, uh, forgive this very basic question, is the draft FMP peer review report available online? Is there an additional public comment period on the final FMP? Yeah, so I, I will go ahead and, and take that question. Um, the draft fishery management plan um, is not available online at this moment. It was available to the reviewers for their review. Um, and it is my understanding that it will go through public comment, um, but all, we invite all of those additional questions um, of that nature to be directed at Ryan Bartling, who is the environmental scientist at the Department of Fish and Wildlife um, mm -hmm. for Pacific Hearing, um, and I will share his email uh, at, the, at the end of the webinar as well to direct those process-based questions um, for, for future uh, department of Fish and uh, Wildlife and Fish and Game Commission uh, meetings and engagement opportunities. Do we have other questions coming through via the chat? Uh, not so far. I went ahead and chatted you, uh, Jeff. I'm, again, I'm sorry for this technical difficulty, um, but it's telling me that uh, because you're using an older version of Zoom, we can't. Um, allow you to speak, um, but if you called in on your telephone or cell phone, um, uh, we could probably uh, uh, get you to speak in that way. And again, if you'd like to chat in your question, um, we can do it that way as well. Um, do we have some other available? Not, can't read. Okay. So, 
And we'll put that phone number up again in just a second. I just didn't have that one thing handy, which I'll be chatting now. Appreciate everyone's patience with all of the technical um, pieces of running a webinar. Um, we will try our very, very best to get to everyone's questions. Um, hang tight with us for just a moment while we try to work out some of these te technical difficulties. Okay, Jeff, how was that? Uh, better, I guess. Am I echoing still? Uh, just slightly, but I think we can hear you, and it's not uh, it's not a bad feedback. So go ahead. Sorry for the sorry for the delay. Okay, yeah. Th thanks for your patience with the technical difficulties. Um, well, so I'm I'm representing uh, Oceana as well as uh, representing Anna Weinstein from Audubon, uh, California. The, the two of us uh, were among the uh, steering committee that worked on the fishery management plan. So wanted to start by thanking the, the peer reviewers and the, and the Ocean Science Trust for the, the helpful peer review. Appreciated the positive statements about the, particularly how the FMP seeks to, uh, to use ecosystem considerations in management. Um, I guess one, one of the difficulties I'll, that, that makes the peer review a little bit hard to interpret is that um, the, the inability for the public to actually see the documents that were reviewed, um, I guess just makes, makes the, uh, it makes it a bit more challenging, um, particularly um, because some of the uh, review comments seem to indicate that uh, some of the, the FMP products that they were reviewing uh, were incomplete. Um, and, and so I guess um, just jumping to uh, maybe a question for, for Dr. Hazen as the chair of the panel. Um, on the ecosystem considerations part where there was uh, certainly I think some positive statements as well as ways could be, it could be improved. I guess I'm wondering uh, what's, what sort of uh, actions or work could we do per, specifically if, if, if the FMP had some clearer thresholds for various indicators, like you mentioned, kind of a, a red, yellow, green ranking for some of these, whether you know, alternative forage or predators are in you know, good condition or poor condition. If that were done more uh, quantitatively, you know, we've seen the Farallon Institute actually try to do that and assign red, yellow, green to, to various scenarios. Um, would that, would that provide the comfort to the reviewers um, for, uh, I guess, supporting uh, some limited discretion for managers in any annual quota adjustments? For example, if, if we better define in the FMP what an extreme ecosystem circumstance was, would that, um, would that help address the concerns you had over, I guess, the, the lack of, of clarity there? Yes, thank you for the question, um, Jeff. I, I'll speak first and then please Cody and Dan let me know if I've either over or understated in any way here. But the biggest issue I think we saw there was the, the potential for conflict each year without having, as you said, some more kind of defined um, rules for, for when adjustments would be made. The, the, Section, I think it's section 3.2 in our review, has some examples such as, you know, one that the state's very familiar with, the ramp that's looking at humpback whale entanglement, has essentially a logic flow chart that says, you know, if krill is really bad and anchovies are close to shore, you're likely to be in an increased, you know, entanglement risk world. That's my take on it. Please don't quote me on that in any way. But that that's sort of a kind of a, a logic rule kind of decision tree support would really help in making sure that the group understands what is a good year versus a bad year when, you know, ecosystem considerations would either, you know, increase or decrease from the HCR as it was, um, you know, baseline was written. Cody or Dan, did you have any additions? I think that covers it for me. I, I think, um, well, I'll say a little bit. The, um, my experiences in fisheries management, um, 
A lot of it centers around trust building and having clear expectations of how interactions and um, changes in quota will proceed. So having rules for how that happens is uh, an important thing in my eyes. Well, yeah. One other, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Dan, you first, sorry, you first. Yeah, just, just to build on that a little bit. Um, I think one of the things that we had, we saw a little um, had some concerns with was you know the capacity to build in um, justification not not just what the quantitative thresholds might be but what the justification for that was some uncertainty therein and then given that what the formal process would be of integrating you know some of the different stakeholders um, in that process um, and so just having more quantitatively defined. Um, thresholds of what good versus poor is may not necessarily uh, be part of the whole story um, in, in uh, kind of getting over that hump, if that makes sense. Yeah, if I can add one more quick thing, that the, there was a table provided to us that, um, you know, the Farallon Institute put together a scenario where you could look at, you know, in one of the appendices, we could say, you know, sardines are in a poor year, anchovy are in a poor year, you know, how does that then translate to potential you know, risk for, you know, the San Francisco Bay herring stock, at least in terms of, you know, relative to other ecosystem predators and things that rely on forage fish. And so I think having those just, you know, again, it's, it's not coming up with, you know, um, an exact 2,332 metric ton reduction, but it's having rules that are in place that can be kind of evaluated and, you know, pointed to as to why a decision was made, I think is, was a big part of the, the concern there. But again, I don't want that to highlight, you know, to, to uh, obscure the fact that we really felt that these ecosystem considerations, taking, you know, taking that approach forward was extremely valuable, um, you know, and something that is not, in my opinion, is not done, you know, as much as I would like in fisheries management. Great, thank you so much. And thank you, Jeff, for your question. Again, apologies for the technical difficulties and thanks for hanging with us. Do you have any other questions on the line? Jeff, as we've figured out how to, how to unmute you now, <laughs> And there are no other questions coming through. I would like to just offer you the opportunity as you're unmuted to follow up uh, on that question or, or ask another question. And I'll just say that um, Elliot's call just dropped. He's calling back, so it might be just a second for him to get back to us. Oh, it looks like he's back up. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Our mute button is right next to our hang up button, so that's now the second time I've done a virtual <laughs> mic drop. After I say something good. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I appreciated the helpful context there. I, I guess it, you know, what we, I think, in the steering committee really attempted to do, um, and I think this gets to some of Cody and, and Dan's points, um, the we were urged not to, uh, I guess, put in hard and fast rules for exactly how much quotas would go up and down based on certain things. Like I think as Elliot was saying, you know, not, not a specific amount of quota change when certain things happen. Um, but what, I think after quite a bit of uh, discussion about things like uh, the cutoff of 15,000 tons below what the fishery is closed. Um, you know, we had, we struggled because the management strategy evaluation did not explicitly include these ecosystem uh, consideration elements. And so we appreciated that uh, peer review recommendation. Um, but right now the, the department has uh, quite a bit, and commission actually have quite a bit of discretion in setting annual quotas based on a whole variety of factors um, through the you know stakeholder driven uh, directors hearing advisor committee etc. And so the you know, it sounds like um, the committee is not saying that that discretion should go away. It sounds like what I'm hearing is that there is just more. Uh, uh, 
just clear guidance uh, in terms of how far a quota might be adjusted, uh, et cetera. Because I think, at least from a stakeholder perspective, the FMP process has uh, built actually quite a, a bit of trust among stakeholders uh, regarding a lot of these factors. And I think we were very uh, encouraged to see um, I would say a, a highly negotiated uh, compromise where uh, the, the harvest control rule was put in place explicitly including this ability to have some discretion within some bounds. So the more, uh, the, the more uh, guidance you could give us to, um, you know, based on information that's already out there without having to do a whole nother set of analyses and contracts uh, it may just be a question of further clarifying some of that guidance, um, but if there is anything that you can kind of provide us that uh, would help us kind of respond to the, the peer review so that we could actually still use some of those ecosystem considerations as originally intended, uh, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, so much for, for your thoughts. Um, we'll throw it to, to Elliot or the other reviewers if you have any follow-up um, to, to those comments. I um, really appreciate sharing all of that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm scrolling to the relevant section in the review right now, hopefully to find, to make sure I'm saying it correctly. But, you know, the... Another stop lighting example that I can think of is regarding um, salmon returns and copepods that Bill Peterson at the Northwest Research Science Center has come out with. And they basically have a suite of indicators that get colored in this kind of yellow, green, red. And then you can either count up the number of indicators that are in a, you know, concerned state or take some sort of an average, you know, depending on you know, the best metrics. But then that can give you a you know, I, I call them semi-quantitative, but we came up with that. We came with, uh, had some issues with that term on our uh, on the review panel. But you know, it's it's a it can give you a at least a range of kind of whether you're in you know good or generally bad conditions and what that might mean for adjustment. So happy to um, you know come you know, mention a few more of those. But I think we have a few of those directly in the report, and that salmon one's another good one. The ramp I, I mentioned is another good one. Uh, PSA is another one, Productivity Susceptibility Analyses, provide this semi-quantitative scoring method as well. Uh, where you can look at number of indicators that are low, medium, high, how that kind of maps onto an overall risk um, decision matrix. In, in general, though, um, it, from my perspective, uh, additional analysis, and I, it sounds like from Elliot's as well, that there additional analysis would be needed. There's not some overarching um, framework that's been developed that you can just drop into a system and say this is how we can do this. It's something that will take a, it's an iterative process. It's great that you guys have it here at the, the base of your fisheries management plan. You've got it in in the beginning, but it'll need to be refined and honed, I think, as time goes on. Great, thank you both so much. Any other questions from our peer reviewers about their recommendations? Any clarification that would be helpful to understand some of the recommendations that are found in the report and described here today? Great. Hearing and seeing. None. <laughs> um, I will take this moment just to flip to looking ahead. Um, the Department of Fish and Wildlife is considering all of this information that is found in the peer review report um, and will be bringing this to the same commission at an upcoming meeting. Um, so please check that uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife Pacific Hearing webpage, which I have listed here on this resources slide. 
um, as well as the Fish and Game Commission schedule website for more details on the timing of those upcoming meetings and further opportunities to engage um, with, with us, questions and comments through that process. Um, I also have the Ocean Science Trust web page here again, um, found several times throughout this presentation for additional information, as well as these resources, including this PowerPoint and um, today's agenda and some background information. Um, I will offer the opportunity for the reviewers to just have any final thoughts that they might want to share before we sign off today. Nothing on my end. Thank you all for, for being here to, to share those presentations um, and to participate in this conversation. Thank you, those of you who shared your questions. Um, very helpful for this conversation. Uh, thank you so much for your participation and making this a successful dialogue. Um, and we really, really appreciate it. And um, so if you do have any additional questions, um, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, my email, jessica.williams at oceansciencetrust.org is here at the bottom of this slide, as well as Ryan Bartling at the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, who will answer questions as well. That is ryan.bartling at wildlife.ca.gov. And I got a chat in from Ryan. He would like to th uh, thank uh, the reviewers and uh, Ocean Science Trust again uh, for our work. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ryan. And thank you all for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. This uh, recording of this webinar will be available on the Ocean Science Trust webpage um, in just a few days as we um, get it finished recording and then downloaded. Uh, Keep checking back um, if you want it for reference, as is helpful. Um, and again, we want to just finally thank you all for participating and hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much. <laughs>